All right, folks, welcome back to another edition. As always, the big man. How are we doing there, Big Rob? Good, Tom. How about you? <laughs> We're doing good. This is take two. Uh, Rob and I just did yeah. uh, a full podcast, and we were just laughing our balls off because this is, what, the 65th episode? And this is the first time. 66. Yeah, 66. <laughs> this is correct. This is the first time I I forgot to hit record. <laughs> um, so after the after the podcast was over, I went to go stop recording, and there was no oh. and I realized that I never hit record. So this is take two. Um, yeah, the first one was really good, guys. So we yeah. apologize. Yeah, so this <laughs> one should be pretty fluid, considering we just did this. Um, yeah, Rob, did you catch any of the farmers this past weekend? I did. I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, I enjoyed that it was a Wednesday through Saturday for sure. Um, like I said prior to this. Um, I enjoyed that it was a Saturday because of the sheer fact of, you know, watching it at night, you didn't have the Sunday scaries worrying about work the next day. It was enjoyable. Um, I didn't even like Wednesday caught it, you know, put it on the background, same thing Thursday, Friday, but um, paid attention to it. And I think it was a lot of great golf, man, just to see Homa, you know, come back on Sunday and win the whole thing. And, uh, you know, J- Rambo will fall apart a little bit, but no, it was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, to your point, totally forgot about the Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, when I tuned in on Thursday, super confused. It took me literally 10 minutes. I had to look at my calendar, look at my phone. Yeah. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, yeah, because Sunday's games. Um, tournament's awesome. I mean, the Farmers is is probably in my top seven, top five, maybe, you know, outside of majors. Um, mm-hmm. I think the finishing hole, the 18th, is yeah. just, it's awesome. There's... There's so much potential for a playoff there. There's, yeah. there's you got water. It's a par five. A lot of things could happen there. Um, Max is 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 a savage man. I don't think so. Out of like his six wins, what is it like? Maybe one he's ever led, and I don't think he's ever finished second. And he came back from what a five shot lead uh, this past Saturday. Yeah, I don't know if it was his first one, the Wells Fargo, that he was leading it um, the whole time. But yeah, it's uh, it's like a crazy stat too. Like what they're saying, um, but his fifth win in the last what forty five or forty six starts, something like that. Yeah, he's found something, man. He's 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 gotten hot. He's gotten confident. His game is so good. It's just so steady. Um, yeah, and he's a finisher. I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't, I think he's always been trailing in, you know, to be trailing by five and then come out and, and go low. And then, you know, pull a seven wood on the 18th going yeah, for it. I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, no, that was, um, that was crazy. Like it was, it was all, it was all around good. Like the, the broadcasting was awesome to see that angle with uh, Keegan on the, in the sand on 18. I don't know if you saw that from behind to see how hard that shot was and everything like that. It was, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I mean, it, CBS definitely stepped up their game a little bit and that whole, you know, home, uh, with the uh, AirPod in, you know, talking through his uh, that hole, his tee shot, and th- that whole hole in general on Friday was great. I thought that was a cool add on to do for the season. I absolutely loved it. I couldn't agree more. Um, and it's crazy again, the PGA Tour, you know, kind of just scripted, right? They do their mm-hmm. first in round interview. Max goes on to win it. I mean, it couldn't have worked out any better, but the interview itself. Unbelievable, man. We need more of that. I think it's, yeah. it's such a great addition, such a great feature. Uh, and then you mentioned prior to in our in our first podcast that yeah, right. <laughs> you know um, Max did mention he's been working with the tour and, and bringing yeah. this to light, which it, it's awesome, man. Uh, especially for guys like us that you know kind of want to dig deeper into the thought process behind shots like that and what's going through their head and where's the miss and you know where do they want to be and. It, I don't think it could have worked out any better. Um, no, not cool at all. See. And then you could hear, you know, him and his his caddy, their conversation. Uh, I'm all for it. I think, you know, in and even not a, not just like doing one per round. I think you get three, four guys in an event to do it. I don't think that's asking a whole lot. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And but I, I get it. I think uh, you mentioned, you know, some guys not, you know, might not be open to it, and yeah. they might you know, ask their caddy to do it, what have you. But in general, the feature I think is, is super cool. I hope it sticks around and and more guys do it. That's for sure. Yeah. Like home, I was saying, I know enough podcast was basically, you know, he's trying to get guys to buy in on it, right. Have have the tour buy, have these guys buy in on this. 
And yeah, if it, if, it, if a player is in, you know comfortable with it, you know maybe the caddy wears the the AirPod for the whole, so they could, at least we could hear their conversation about club choices and everything like that. But then um, the one thing you did mention was like the Aon risk re, the Aon risk reward challenge with the holes. You know maybe that's the hole that they do it on, so that people know that that's the hole that is the Aon risk reward challenge, so that they have a better understanding of what that is and why it was chosen for it and everything like that. So I mean he's got. A lot of great ideas that it sounds like that he's working for to better it for us as the viewer and not just getting us something about like how his family's doing or, you know, silly questions. It's more about what we want to know, golf shots and cl- uh, club selection, you know. Right. And then I, you also mentioned that it goes towards like their PIP too, the the TV ratings. What is it? Yeah. So Chris from knowing up like brought up a great uh, point about it. it was like, you know, think about guys with the PIP and, you know, there's there's TV ratings. I think they're called the Nielsen ratings, Nielsen ratings. And, you know, that counts towards their PIP, right? That's measurable data for them to use. So he brought up to Max is like, you know, what if there's a guy like, I think it was, what was it, Colin that was in 11th place last year? And maybe he did this for a couple of holes and they could use those TV ratings and it bumps them up into like 10th or 9th or, you know, within the money. So, you know, there's other, there's different things there that, you know, could benefit the player itself by doing this so we'll see i mean like sure. max said he was always so supposed to do this weekend you know he's been the one working on it. i think they got other tournaments obviously lined up but he didn't give out the rest who who else is going to do it so i'm sure it's probably going to be your your you know same guys that kind of do the match your more notable guys especially yeah. guys that are good you know on camera so like speed jt um it, I mean, I'm assuming if Tiger does it, he's just going to win the pip again. But <laughs> well, he brought he brought up a great point where it's like, you know, if the guys that are like, you know, in the top 10 of the tournament or so, like maybe try to get somebody that's like in 20th or just outside of 20th that's going off earlier where it's like maybe they go out and shoot a ridiculous low round and they, they, they get back into it, you know, or right. they have somebody that's lower on the on the leaderboard that does it and they record it and then they play it, they play it later where it's like almost where, you know, the final holes are coming down to and they, you know, play it to show like what the player is actually going through, you know, type deal things. So, yeah, that would be very cool. Yeah. Um, we had other golf on too, Rob, and there was quite the controversy around T gate and slash tree gate since yeah. our last episode. I think it, we heard about it. Prior to our last episode about Reed throwing a tee at, at, at Rory, and it was all assumption. And then I think the right. following day was the video. So what did you think initially when you saw the video? So, you know, on Tuesday when we recorded, we just heard about it, right? You know, right. all over Twitter, T- Reed whoops a tee at Rory, <laughs> right? And I was sitting there and I visualized in my head, like the worst case scenario, right? Like he lined it up, like he was pitching a ball, like he was Nolan Ryan or something like that. And then, you know, Wednesday comes out and I see it on Twitter. I just started laughing at myself. Like, are you kidding me? This is what it was. Yeah. I assumed the worst. It was literally just, you know, he just tossed the tee out of his pocket. Listen, I, I, I get it. Um, you know, they said that like it was live tees. They had live logo print on them. Right. And other guys were doing it too, throwing around the the driving range. But like, you know, and then you mentioned it when we talked earlier. But you know, Rory got subpoenaed on fucking Christmas Eve. Of course, right. he's gonna be pissed. He's not. He's not. He doesn't want anything to do with them. I no. wouldn't. And he was just sitting there setting up for his practice. What if he was setting up his track man? It looked like he was lining something up. So I mean. Right. Again, it's just golf Twitter, I think, blowing it out of proportion just to make some oh, yeah. drama, shit like a that. A thousand percent. I mean, granted, if if Rory was never subpoenaed and it was more of just like P. Reed being on live and Rory on the PGA Tour, sure, I could see maybe, you know, saying, well, Rory could at least say hi to him. But the guy was subpoenaed on Christmas Eve. Like, yeah. listen, guy, I don't want to talk to you. I don't ever want to <laughs> right. see you. Right. So I don't blame him. But then he had Treegate. In the yep. third round, Patrick Reed's ball goes into a tree um, that really didn't end up being the tree that he he or the uh, the officiating uh, the rules official were looking at. Sure. I mean, he had the rules official out there with binoculars, and then he told them, "Yeah, it's the one with the arrow on it. That, that's my ball. I've I've been able to, you know, a hundred percent confirm because I have an arrow on my ball. That's my ball." 
And then Brandel broke it down later that night on, you know, uh, golf week or whatever. And they put a shadow over the ball. The ball went into the first tree and not the third tree. Yeah. Um, so the guy just continues to get away with shit. And I just don't understand it. I, I don't see how anybody takes his word for it. Um, and then Monday Q, Ryan French brought up a hilarious tweet. He wanted somebody from the tournament to go out that night with a cherry picker or a lift and find Reed's ball in a different tree than the one he said it was in so that yeah. he could be disqualified, which I thought was hilarious. And to be honest, it would have been it would have been great to see because somebody would have finally put him in his place. Uh, yeah. But yeah, a lot going on with with Patrick Reed and Rory. Obviously, Rory ends up winning that tournament. I think he buried his last two. Yep. Um said he didn't even play well. Maybe that's a shot at at P Reed saying, sure. yeah. you know, I, I kind of own you. But yeah, a lot going on uh in the last couple of weeks in golf. It, it, it's been great. Um it's just going to get better, though. We're leading up to our favorite, you know, tournament. It's uh, then you're going to have what live going off pretty soon with the tournament. Um, I, I didn't even I didn't look at the schedule. I think it came out officially today, right? The, yeah, they're all locked yeah. in. Yeah, they're locked in. We have another great event on the PGA Tour this week, Rob. We have yep. the AT and T Pro Am. Is there anybody that you like in that field? I mean, I'm you know who it is. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to ride it till he does it. So Spieth, just on the speed train. I'm on the speed train. I'm not getting off until you until he wins it. Unless we're you're gonna, gonna jump the masters, but go ahead. <laughs> we're gonna jump right into the boogie with T uh ATT Pro Amp picks. His long shot, Merritt 110 to one, Pendrith 50 to one, McCarthy 40 to one, Seamus Power 22 to one, and his favorite, Maverick McNeely, 20 to one. And you could book it with T. Yeah, I like that McNeely pick. Um, I like him a lot. I think he's a good dude. Um, he's a strong player. Um, I, I've i always, like, he's like one of those uh, Thigalas. Like, I want to see them win, right? Succeed. They're just, they're they're good people. So, and his game's good. So, I'd like to see that for sure. I think that's a good pick. Yeah. Did you see uh, Josh Allen is foregoing the Pro Bowl to play in the 18th <laughs> Pro Am? I didn't see that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. Why yeah. The Pro Bowl stinks anyways, now that it's kind of just like a, a fashion show slash like they don't even play. So why risk your career and why not go play Pebble Beach? Do they, do they say that he's hurt or that he just uh, he wants to play in the no? He'd there, rather just play in the pro or in the uh, the AT and T Pro Am than the Pro Bowl. I, and I don't blame him. I don't see why you know anybody would skip that. But every year, Rob, this guy and I'm sure you know who it is. Who do you think? I, I've told you this in the past. Who do you think this year at the AT and T Pro Am is going to bug me up a wall? Oh, the the good old Bill Murray, I think. Right, the guy is the worst. We're going to see him a hundred <laughs> times with his, <laughs> with, his, with his stupid little hat on and his in his outfit, and he's going to be telling gloves. Yeah, and he's going to be telling terrible jokes to the fans, and we're going to see highlight after highlight of him and then we're going to see what's his name from fresh prince of bel-air i'm assuming a hundred times it's the same oh, carlton yeah carlton it's Alfa the, alfonso yeah it's the same guys over and over um i mean they got to get some new talent in there so i'm pumped to see josh josh allen playing in the pro am who's he playing with they say that i don't know okay I do not know uh but we're going to jump right into the top three rob are you ready for that I am ready for the top three. Let's hear it. So obviously I know what you're, I always, I already know since we tried to do this already, but um, we were talking the other day, a group of us about, you remember when we were younger and we were growing up and we had the starter gear, like all the types of different starter gear we had. Oh yeah. And the one guy actually um, in another group that in group chat, he was at a store and I don't know where it was, but in the store, it was all starter, all starter gear, like jackets, sweatshirts, all the stuff that we had when we were growing up. Right. So the other talking with some other guys, it got me thinking like, what are your top three? I'm assuming you had starter gear when we grew up. So what are your top three starter gear that you had? Oh yeah. We had, I mean, everybody had jackets here. I think my mm -hmm. my oldest brother maybe had some pants, but mainly we all just had winter jackets to pretty much to probably because my mom so that she could differentiate like in the store <laughs> who was who. 
So oh, the teams. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So probably in the three hole, I remember my brother, and then I ended up having it. It was a Dallas Cowboys, and they, they were all the starter jacket with the pouch in the middle, right? Yeah. It was right. like the pullover right. uh, with the with the starter zipper. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I had a D- Dallas Cowboys one would be three, and then I had a Michigan one. It was like yellow sleeves, navy or maize in the blue or maize in the middle with the pouch. And then yep. number one, I had an OG black and red Bulls one with a pouch in the middle. There you go. There How you, you go. Uh, I had my favorite. Well, not my favorite. My third, my three hole would be uh, your favorite team. It was Notre Dame, but it was the Leprechaun. It was a full zip jacket with a big hood, but it had the full Leprechaun on the front going across where you know you zip down through the middle of them. Uh, two would be uh, old school Bulls snap up jacket. If you remember those, oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. and, and then my my number one, and I felt like the coolest kid out there wearing it. I probably wore it every Saturday until it didn't fit me anymore. Um, when we went out with friends, was uh, it was the black hoodie pullover, uh, obviously hoodie pullover, but it had the script for the Bulls, and then it had, if you remember, like the three color like entwined uh, drawstring type of things. It was pretty sweet. Oh yeah, I remember those. Speaking of. Now that you mentioned the 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 button up, my oldest brother had a Bulls button up, and I remember he used to play the Bulls, you know, intro, um, and then mm-hmm. rip it open like as if he was coming out of the tunnel. <laughs> so awesome! Yeah, I remember that jacket for sure. Um, what a great episode, Rob! What a another yeah. great episode, a back to back episode. Um, Here we go! Yeah, right. Nostalgic. Play it the, back with the starter top three. Um, we got a lot. Mm-hmm look forward to also the golf show is coming up now yes for in a month of february yeah the golf show at the end of the month the 24th through the 27th come see us at booth 734 uh our merch drop just ended that should be going out soon um just a ton of good stuff going on we're excited for this year we still have a lot more to to release so until next time uh we'll see you in the fairway route see you in the fairway time see you buddy